flute within the reed I'm just in the grain The ocean in the way The titan in the small Rise within the fall Forming formless nails In a lot of consciousness That's your first experience of Kirtan. It is the, there you go, we're just fixing the sound here. There we go. If that's your first experience of Kirtan, you clearly need to get involved with more of this. And that's why they're here. We're going to talk about what Kirtan is and, and what its intent is. And, and not ironically enough, uh, this is what Joy Score is about. Joy Score is about identifying the obstacles in your life, enlightening them up with the best things in life. And, uh, and, and Kirtan is one of those things. Uh, Suzanne, you're an expert on this, as well as these two other lovely people. Uh, would, could, could you expand on that for us? Expand on Kirtan? Sure. The or just the relation to, of Kirtan to Joy Score. Oh, okay. Well, Kirtan to Joy Score, uh, Kirtan's a wonderful way to elevate your frequency. It's a great way to come into a heart space. It's a beautiful way to come into joy, definitely. And if you ever have the chance to go to something like Bhakti Fest or Shakti Fest, you'll get to be in a mosh pit of love. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm transformed by that. I, mean, I was elevated. Absolutely. Uh, I got a little tear in my eye. Yeah. Oh, like, no, Thomas. I was like, I was like, I'm totally moved. I'm like, oh. oh. Yeah. And, that, and wow. that's beautiful. And so, I mean, and, and Joy Score, in terms of just what these little quizzes are about, what this app is about, what this website is about. It's about mm. finding that joy and elevating and elevating ourselves and, and actually adjusting our physiology, uh, making it better, making us more healthy, making us in, more intelligent. You realize negativity and stress actually kills the brain, makes us... I would believe our, that. It lowers our, lowers our IQ, for God's sake. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and, so, uh, and, and so this is... I this, believe that. This is time. what this joyscore.co... Uh, in its infancy we are now all, all you can do is go there and you can sign up now <laughs> but, for, but for right now you can get a good taste of of what this entire organization is going to bring to you mm. 
Larissa, Benji, thank you so much for thank you. For, for coming here and, thank you and for helping us, us helping us understand the life affirming vibe that this cure time. How did you guys get involved in this? Well, <laughs> well, um, I have loved yoga and. I've been doing yoga like it feels like forever now. I feel like I kind of came in doing yoga, at least the love of that frequency who's of your, yoga. Who was your teacher? Who was your initial teacher? Who introduced you to this stuff? Well, honestly, it was videos. Videos? <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> well, we you are. went from fun to steal <laughs> you know, to yoga. <laughs> seriously, it was like I... My first experience with yoga was watching these amazing videos, kundalini videos. Because I... Well, okay... To be honest, honest, when I was in college, I took a, a Hatha yoga class, and embarrassingly, I did not like it at all. I like I, I felt stressed out holding these postures, and I was I thought that I would love that, but you needed I, a little bit more Hatha flow, man. You needed more Hatha flow. I think kundalini. so. I think so. And the Kundalini, the kunda, the Kundalini. <laughs> Get that serpent moving. That's right. But the Kundalini, like when I saw it, because I thought, wow, I thought I would really, really love yoga but what i realized is that the yoga that i took wasn't all that yoga is um did you, manage, did you manage to venture to india and and take that all in or you know when you say that i would say not in this lifetime <laughs> not in this one i've been there so many times a little rough in india folks yeah but no i i would love to go back to india and i say back to india because i knew even when i was a small child i knew that i i've been there like many many times i have like a a deep deep connection with it and the music and the culture um how about you and benji you t teaming up with this awesome uh, guitarist, vocalist. I mean, how did you guys find they each other? They have a whole tribe. Let's share a little bit about share, the tribe. Share about your tribe. It's a long story, <laughs> but and, um, and I understand they have a CD coming out, so they're going to talk about that and how you can get your hands on some of this awesome music as well. So, go, what about this tribe? Let's see. What would, what would be the elevator version of? You know, Probably just saying that. Twelve years ago, <laughs> she was looking for a bass player, and and a friend of mine connected us, and and uh, I was already into, you know, I've been playing rock and roll forever, but. Um, I was I was into spiritual things. I never heard of kirtan, never heard of mantra. What spiritual things were you into? I I listened to a lot of Marianne Williamson books on CD, and, uh, and you guys seem like genu guys. you guys sound, seem like genuinely happy people. So I mean, and that's really I have uh, fits of happiness. <laughs> did, did you, Way did to you, be honest. Did you I love have it. A, I mean, <laughs> when you got into this, did it change your perspective entirely in terms of the vibe that you had in your life, or was it? Does it? How about? How does it feel when you play that beautiful I think we music? All have he happens. shifted so much. I have to say, like when he first came from Ohio, his energy was so different. Edgy, right? So yeah. much edgier. He yeah. is so like he is so. I don't even know if he edgy realizes stuff. how much I he don't realize. like. He just like. <laughs> totally got sucked in <laughs> to the whole like into this whole vortex of of energy and just you drop deeper and deeper into it and you are it like you are in that vibe can, can you, can you, really can you describe that that's really what this audience is really wondering about in terms of you talk about dropping deeper and deeper into it the spirituality well how do you can you can you it's a frequency. It's a frequency. And it's all frequencies, and we have choices to, to feel into those frequencies that really support us. And, and we know not that, not that one frequency is right and the other one is wrong. It's not a good, bad, right, wrong thing. It's just about what is vibrationally what you're ready for. And if you're ready for those, those frequencies of more love and, and more joy and even more self-expression and to like flow, you know, even more flow and finding the magic in the moment. It's, um, it's definitely a, these different levels of frequencies. And I don't like to say that there's a hierarchical because it's all a choice. It's like, it's like tuning into a different radio stations. So, so you walking around in this frequency or you, well, just when you perform, do you kind of drop deepest into it? Is it something you maintain when you leave the studio? She's got a few different frequencies. <laughs> We all do. We're a spectrum. Well, good. A spectrum talk, of light. Well, talk about that that jump because that's really what that healing value is. When you can return to the origin of the thing that makes you happy, makes you healthy, you know, gives you a purpose or a sense of what really is for you. I mean, I mean, that's got to be. Are there just moments of enlightenment? 
you feel because you you feel you're so connected and you're both of you are sharing this directly to the source i'm feeling it i think we've both been enlightened on occasions you know and what does that mean how do you define enlightenment it, it's like when you get that that feeling of full connectedness you're 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 one with god and everything and there's nothing else there you know but it's a heck of a trick to bring that into your regular 3d consciousness and walk around in like long beach california you know let's talk about that trick so how do you trick it i don't know it's choosing it it's it's honestly like i could be in a frequency that's like more beta brainwave i i to me it really has a lot to do with our brainwaves too because we're conditioned to be in beta brainwave and to be in those brain waves of we have to make things happen and and that that we're going to make something happen and we've got to move 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 and do do in just a certain way that's very beta and it's much faster of a brain wave and when we drop into alpha like music and especially like kirtan and, and the intentioning of opening your heart it starts to drop us into this alpha brain wave which is more expansive and there you have the science there you have the science of joy score and that and so joy score from the application is going to approach this from the intellect into the heart these guys are going right from right to the heart and they're letting us kind of go past go collect 200 bucks right you just kind of <laughs> and we all can we all can do that i mean it's it's it really is a matter of our breath like the breath is the portal like i will find in my session work i do session work with people throughout the week and i could be in a beta brainwave and i can walk into a session space and i could be like rah, 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 and i could be like oh my god i gotta make my juice to get into my session <laughs> you know it can be a little frantic and then it's like so that's part of your that's part of your preparation this juice what what is what's in that juice celery <laughs> <laughs> celery juice celery, celery. juice the, the, the road to happiness yeah, it, that's a whole other conversation, but it's really, really healthy. But getting like getting that into the space, like I'm taking care of my body, I'm loving my body, but I can still be in like a, a beta, like I'm okay, I gotta move, right? And I'm in that place. But the second I walk through those doors and I sit down, it's like I drop into my breath. And I think the breath is probably the most important thing, at least it is for me. And like, and realizing that it's not all about me. And it's not all about Larissa or how even Larissa feels. Like I know I can show up in my sessions because I am dropping into breath and I'm consciously inviting in those higher frequencies into the space. And then it goes. Look, these people have music to bring themselves in. They have music. And the idea is for you to find the thing that brings you in. It might be music. It might be working out. It might be going to church. It might be going dancing. To synagogue it might be going to the right. and and then you have this other thing <laughs> this traditional entertainment aspect of it and the root of all entertainment i believe is to elevate that audience and so you must be conscientious that your audience is where you are when you do your work yeah yeah is it's about opening and connecting it, it it's a space of oneness like for me an audience feels kind of like one person and in that space creating sympathetic resonance by opening myself up dropping into prayer um dropping into like bowing you know bowing to the to this higher presence of of love it truly is just love and like dropping into bowing to that bowing to that letting my larissa surrender to that and giving myself to that giving myself to the magic more than my mind and it allows you to be an extremely effective communicator from that perspective yeah yeah the more i drop in the better i am <laughs> for sure it's well, like the well, more you know, authentic you, you, and you, you take that for granted at this point but there's a lot of us me included that has to remind myself conscientiously to do something to bring me out of these beta waves as she's as she's describing in order to be effective in order to uh find my place in the world you guys have the music to help find that, right? Music that and, and that? breath and and intention. I mean, dropping in. And if you with can intention. share a little bit about, so if listeners watching, they're like, "What is this stuff you're talking?" And what's Ganesh? Or you know, we just heard this mantra about uh, Ganesh, uh, Juan, Hindu deity. Juan, bring down, bring down Suzanne's exposure on the camera. Um. So if you can share a little bit of what you experienced when you guys worked in the prison environment and what was possible with your work there through yoga, through breath, mm. through sound, 
Um, just so it can kind of give the audience an understanding of what is possible from all different aspects of society. You don't have to be a yogi to yeah. tap well, go into, into Gratan. Go a bit about the prison work that she's doing. Right to the right to the camera. There's your audience. Well, I think she can explain it best. Oh, oh, oh you can. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, no, oh, no, no doubt. I thought you might have some insight. That's all. Well, I I know I I would like you to share about what you experienced and what you watched and how it can impact just everyone, you know, in society. You don't have to be a yogi today. No. Uh, yeah, but she's impacting prisoners. She's impacting the the most difficult, stressed out, violent individuals on the planet. And you got you're going into prisons to and so what what is the feedback that you're getting when you have these people who are in this environment what is what is some of the experiences uh, or maybe even a story connected to any one of these inmates well i'll i can share a story it was our it may have even been our first when we went into um pitches do you remember was that our mm -hmm. first time that we went in one it was of one of our first times at least um we went in there understanding that these men specifically were domestic violence uh, their abusers and they were there for domestic violence so walking into that situation and from an ego like from personality is like Whew, okay you know this is going to be intense but what happened was before they even walked in there was like an energy that came in before them it was almost like a an angelic presence that started to come in and as they were walking in i felt all these angels with them and so i immediately felt like this is this is important and and it's not just about the abuse there's something much bigger going on here mm -hmm. and when we were sharing our music with them I would connect and I felt connected to different people that I was singing to and I could feel people opening and I think we, you know, all of us had this experience of being blown away by, whoa, this is really affecting them and we're singing in Sanskrit a lot of the time and mm -hmm. and they're, they're becoming softer and more and more receptive and I felt really grateful for that experience but what blew my mind was afterwards um, we were brought a prisoner who I had not made any kind eye contact with at all and he specifically wanted to share with us and the person I can't even remember the it was like one of the counselors that brought him up was um, prefaced it with you have to understand that this this man here we haven't been able to connect with him or mm. get through to him he's been very very closed he had been a prisoner of war mm. Um, in Iraq and they hadn't been able to connect to make a connection and from that time mm -hmm. it being with us in that environment he had a sensation and he shared with us it was the first time that he had been able to forgive what had happened to wow. him and That's to huge. feel forgiven huge yeah. beautiful yeah it's very powerful um, and if you can share a little bit more about you, you, you know, you and Thomas were talking about dropping in and being in that space. And then, Benj, I love it. You have fits of joy. Like, that's fantastic. So if you can talk a little bit more about the humility of, you know, accessing these, these higher vibrations of being, which a lot of people want to be at but can't access, but also trusting and being okay with the mundane. And sometimes you might not have a fit of joy that you're okay to be in that space. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, how easily it is to access, um, if you can share some of the tips besides and, and, the breath. And, 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 no, just, just keep in mind, the, the, try, to, try to take down the uh, metaphysical explanation, try to humanize it a little bit more. Sure. Well, I think the number one thing is compassion for ourselves. So, you know, in that when we're in a place where we're stressed out, you know, if I'm in a moment of being really, really stressed out, rather than shaming myself for being stressed out and being like jesus larissa calm the fuck down <laughs> <laughs> you know which is shaming and there's like a judgment there instead having compassion for myself and like just it's like having compassion for that that part that little one i always think of it as like the child on the inside that's like yeah. um and having compassion for that part of myself getting quiet even touching my body like bringing it down to like touching my belly and touching my heart and breathing into my body and having some honest self-love like 
appreciation for just being. Exactly. And it's those times when I can do that that I start to shift really fast. It's like it shifts me out of that place it's just like so basically we all give ourselves a big hug why don't we all give ourselves a big hug right <laughs> it's like that it's big like, it's big it's so so I like to go hug trees I'm okay I'm okay well listen there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of you know we were hard on ourselves as Americans we're, mm-hmm. our requirements and our expectations that our day to day lives can bring us can be just extremely stifling and we judge ourselves so much based upon what we accomplish what we do how we're appearing in the world rather than like looking at how many likes did I get on a Facebook post or I mean just silly things like that rather than like dropping in with self and and having a lot of compassion and with self right now can you, know? can you function with that level of compassion can you actually step outside the door and, and, and go into uh, go into the world and actually oh my function? god I'm way better at functioning when I have that le- level of compassion way more functional than when I'm in my uh, I grew that beta brain wave, <laughs> you know. So, 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 so not to take the years of your work for granted, but how long do you think it's taken you? How long did it take you to come to that understanding? Um, I think honestly, I, I have felt that my whole life, but I don't think I actually um, put it into practice, like in a physical. It's like how you know things first, like the brain, you like you exercise. know, I know this, but to actually bring it into the body and that's another thing we are so conditioned to live within the mind and to think that because we know something or understand something with the mind that we should be able to do something but it's not until I actually feel it in my body that's why I specifically touch my belly that's why I specifically touch my heart that's why I focus on my breath and slowing my breath down and like like being kind you know with self that specifically has made it more real so and and actually working with others because I work with others in session work and the more I help them do it the more I help myself you know it's like (laughs) it's a good reminder (laughs) it's like let us do this and then I'm like oh yeah Larissa let us do this (laughs) well a lot of times we have a hard time wanting to share that the best part of ourselves and you can see what this wonderful artist is doing she's filling herself up so that when she connects with her audience, all that she's filled up with is shared. And that is the basis of, of joy in terms of just being able to share it. We can also fill ourselves up with hate. We also fill ourselves up with, uh, with egocentric ideas. And then when we connect, we also we share that. So what's nice is, is this is a window. This is a little doorway into understanding that fear of the world around you is really a f- reflective of what you're putting out and so this artist is kind of sharing how she accesses it accesses it and then shares it and that's and that's and that's extremely beautiful and, and Benj how do you jump into a fit of joy <laughs> sounds like an exciting like you know I just play a lot of music and that's probably my best Re, you yeah. know, reprise from day to day cares. Beautiful, yeah. So those are two great tips, I think, for well, our well, listeners. Well, from the entertainer out. I mean, these these guys are entertainers. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about being an entertainer is they have an audience. And what an entertainer learns how to hone and craft is how to actually share themselves through whatever their skill set might be. You guys, uh, so tell us about this CD you have coming out. Well. We're before very you, excited. Before the break, can do another piece of music because you know that's example is the best. We can sit here and talk, but feeling this elevation and experiencing it, and um, you know allowing it to penetrate and being vulnerable enough to allow that in is really what this is about. But talk about your CD. Well, I could start by telling you the the name of the band is Larissa Stowe and Shakti Tribe. Larissa Stowe and Shakti Tribe. Shakti right. Tribe. I used to, I just spell Shakti for those of us that are spelling. S H A K T I. That's a that's a weird Sanskrit thing. Probably. Shakti. It certainly <laughs> is. So what? What's it's Shakti? It's only weird until you know what it is. <laughs> what Shakti? And then it gets a little what, stranger. What, is Shakti? what are you talking about? <laughs> what is Sh- what Shakti? How do you define Shakti? Shakti is the divine feminine 
it's the energy that animates all of creation. So when you in Sanskrit, in the Hindu pantheon mythology, we look at the divine masculine as being pure consciousness that has been realized. And the divine feminine is the energy that animates that. So it's actually like being in form itself. So being human mm -hmm. is an embodiment of Shakti because we are that energy. That divine spirit, you're sort of, di that divine spirit is you're trying to... Yeah, that divine energy that animates all things. The divine spirit that animates all things. It gives it form. So that's your responsibility to your audience. Yeah. And it's like Shakti is also Kundalini, so it's the consciousness within ourself that's awakening. What's Kundalini? D how are you defining it? Because a lot of people have different definitions of Kundalini. Kundalini is that that consciousness, that energy that activates within ourselves at the base of our spine. It, it, it activates within our chakras, it moves up the chakras, and it completely turns us on fully to access all the dimensional frequencies within ourselves. Um, so, so, so chakras are the energy points that define us, that define us energetically as human beings, right? Yes, and and specifically, they're they're even. And I know people you probably haven't heard so much about this, but they're they're actual dimensional well, they're realities the and frequencies. They're the bridge from the physical to the ethereal, the spiritual world. Yes, well, it's dimensional. Well, beautiful. Do you have another song that you you you'd, off the album that you'd like to share with us? I mean, what? And how are we go, how are we going to get a hold of this album when it when it blasts into the planet? Well, did, keep your finger on the pulse. Come and sign up on our web our, our mailing list. That would be a brilliant way to do it. You can look at LarisaStow.com. I wish we could put a graphic up for that. Um, and, well, we uh, will be able to. When you do, be sure to send it to us, and we'll. We'll, 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 plug it. It. we'll plug it and add it to the advertising okay. as we okay. put it out. Okay, but the name of the record is um, There is a Light That Will Remain. At it least that's what it, the working title is right now. Nice. In case we change it last minute. It could be changed <laughs> could last happen. minute. <laughs> Stop the press! <laughs> it's going to press very soon. Though, Luckily, so. it's a digital age. You can even we do can, it after you send it to We'll press. let it rip and we'll, <laughs> Not we'll, the we'll fly away with you. Okay. So, and I second. might drone in here. I can't help but drone in. <laughs> Uh, and this time, since I'm not playing, I think my headset so will, will nice. stay on this time. <laughs> <It went -pachow. laughs> That's all that Shakti. <laughs> all that Shakti. Sounds sexy, mm. Shakti. <laughs> so, I would love to share about this song a little bit before going into it. Absolutely. This is an invitation. All of us hit places like that, the dark night of the soul, some people call it. Where we hit pockets of feeling like we can't do life, um, where it gets really dark, and if we're lucky, we'll experience this as an opportunity to actually discover more of who we are, because in walking through that and facing it, we actually come to know even deeper levels of ourself and what we're capable of and what we're here to do in life. So this song is an invitation to feel into that quality and if you're going through a darkness in your life to open to the possibility that it's exactly what you've needed to explore and experience a new aspect, a more full, more full of love of who you are. Tim. 
gratitude and admiration uh, for my friends and the beauty that I see within both of you when you're performing. Physio physiologically, does that... Absolutely. I, I just am feeling love, like for both of you, not just love, but a lot of love and just, um, yeah. That's a, that's a word that, uh, that that's, a, that's a heavy word, that love word. Yeah. How do you feel after you, how do you feel now? I feel so happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's Beautiful. Like, it feels so like such a gift it's such a dream how, how do you feel now if you play that thing with benji that beautiful music i tend to dwell on the perfection of the music and mm -hmm. so for me it's like i'm grateful that i get to do it it's very sounds pretty perfect artistic though, right? of the song <laughs> and and I'm always, You're always checking striving. my technique to make sure I'm playing well. You got another one you want to go? The sound is good. You're the living exemplary. It depends. Are you going to sing? Of what we're going to do. I just, I hummed. Did you hear me hum? I oh, love yeah. that. <laughs> I love that. Do you, do, do, do you, you want to do another one? Or? Yeah, yeah, if I'm, you want to do another one, share, maybe you want to do some, um, another mantra based one where we can encourage the audience wherever you are, you can sing along. Yeah, there you go. A little mantra. 
So the hum prima that has both, so it's like has. So 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 typically it's set up like the lead follow. Is that is that what you're is that where you're gonna go? Like you lead well, us in and then we. This follow? one's a little different. There's a difference between kirtan in the sense of call and response. Call and response, right? You know, what we did actually with Om Namo Guru Dave Namo is not call and response. It is. It's like a japa where you're just singing. You're singing a mantra and we're singing it together without call and response. And this fa- one too has that quality. We, we used to. She used to do straight kirtan, but in the course of the decade that we've been doing this stuff, um, it has evolved into more of a song format where the mantra is incorporated. But there's also English lyrics, and it goes different places and things. Is that what the last song, uh, not this last song, but the one, previous one where you went into the English, was that the actual interpretation of the song? In a no. sense. I mean, in a sense it is, because Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo, um, and mind you, all of Sanskrit is vibration-based rather than meaning-based. So when we sing something, a mantra, it can evolve and even the meaning of what we're singing about. But right now, what people ascribe to Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo is bowing to the divinity within ourselves and all things. It's seeing that divinity in everything. So the oak within the seed, the flute within the reed is seen within the smallest thing, seeing the bigger picture, so that the was divinity. The first song. That was the very first song. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Because typically our minds want to understand mm-hmm. and we can miss the fruit of this labor if we're trying to literally interpret it so allow yourself to go with it and then you can pull your own interpretation and then she can surprise us with what it actually means <laughs> so good well, that's that's not actually literally what it means that's a beautiful set of lyrics that you wrote right to that's what he yeah that's what he was yeah. just saying interpret from the mantra. right well, good. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll try to. We'll, we'll, we're just going to take another. As inspired, you. dive in. Yes, <laughs> and this one when we get to a hum prima, because this one is also like it's English and it's also Sanskrit, so it's a it's a a masha <laughs> that Perfect. to get us into that that feeling of what is a hum prima, and a hum prima actually means I am divine love. Nice. Verses in my room, a home the temple and the dark, a home
Just tuned in. This is uh, brought to you by Joy Joy Score. Juan, go ahead. Cut to that commercial. Hold a second, hold a second, uh, Rashawn. Not, 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 hey. not yet with Rashawn. Are we back? One second, we're going to close out with them and then... Oh, you're closing out then? Okay. Let's we're see. back, guys. Uh, wow, what a gift, huh? What a gift. Um, so we have Larissa here. Benji had to take a momentary break. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Thank you. Bob, we're, we're live? No. We're yeah. live? Uh, <laughs> People are just wandering in. <laughs> we are we love this that. Is how you know it's live. We love that. <laughs> we love, we we love that Bob nerves. came in to say hello. <laughs> yeah. Bob, do you want to come in and, and wrap it up? You want yeah. you have words to say to us? But listen, it, it, like I said, it, it was a gift. Mm. And if you have anything for our audience that you would like to for them mm. to take with them more than the gift that you already gave us all, uh, well, well, you know, you, ha you have the floor. I'm just, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful to be here with you all, and this is such a beautiful space and there's so much intention in this space for creating joy in the world and uplifting the vibration of the planet and and it feels really good to be a part of this and thank you Suzanne thank for you. inviting us to be here and giving us the opportunity to to share this vibration with everyone I think this is what it's all about so when that album comes out you're gonna let it, you're gonna let us know and you're gonna give us some information so we can run it and then we'll I'll be right. back in a couple of months. And, I would love uh, that. And, and and let us know how that album release has been going, and maybe get something else you can. We'll elevate, share some more. Elevate yeah. our audience, audience some more. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Thank into you, the, Thomas. In, thank you the, for your heart, your kind heart. Into the stratosphere, darling. You took all of us. So Kirtan, in its essence, is sharing joy. Sharing joy. Sharing devotion. Sharing bhakti. Um, sharing that devotion and that bhakti. 
there's like these beautiful ways like to come together as a community like you mentioned bhakti fest and shakti fest and we're going to be out at bhakti fest when, in when, september when is, when is that when, do you have do you remember those exact dates yeah it's like september like 12th um through the 14th 15th your, about yeah um and we're performing on friday um which is i think it's the 14th where it's out at Joshua Tree. Yeah, it's in Joshua, Joshua Tree. Joshua Tree Retreat Center. So, so right there so on the main drive. So those are a couple of great clues for you guys to get involved in this and to go hang out and and, and have a great time. So, it's so, so healing, so, so healing there's, there's to be in that. There's a lot of local. There's tons of local kirtan, right? Yeah. Absolutely, like, and it's becoming somebody, more and more popular just, by the day. Well, if, if you want to, if you want to get the full effect, the Bhakti Fest is the way to do it Bhakti because Fest. it's yeah. it's four days I been yet. Of, of, this, of this music <laughs> and and the best of the people who are doing it, and everybody's just totally fallen into the the, the what they call the bhav the vibe of the, it. the devotional the yeah it's devotion bhav. the devotion to to love it's really the devotion to raise your vibration to love to the divine within and without yeah. so that's, that's september 16th and you're gonna have a workshop there the transformation of power and play also correct? yes you're right yeah, from yeah. 3 to 4 30. Three to four mm -hmm. thirty. That's the yeah. workshop is <laughs> on Sunday, on Sunday, Friday. Morning. We're on like at four o'clock, I think, four yeah. to five thirty on main stage. So look, listen, Google Friday. Google Kirtan and then Google these guys and find out where they are and find out where everything is and go go, and go, ele go elevate your spirits and learn how to elevate that spirit conscientiously. So if you ever get stuck in a, in the mud, you can just pull your butts right out of pull it. Pull your butt right out of it. Good. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Awesome. Thank you, awesome. Hey, thank run, you run, Thomas. Uh, thank you, run, Suzanne. Run, run thank you guys thank both you, for being here. I appreciate you so thank much. Thank you, Ben. Being a police officer is a tough job. Well, everything's good. Max graduated. The job is to keep others safe. Back inside. Back inside. As well as yourself. Shots fired, shots fired. Freeze! Freeze! Put your hands in the air! But what do you do when your back is against the wall? What happened, man? I did what I had to do, man. I fear for my life. And your life is on the line. Put your hands in the air! Turn around nice and slow. Why? I didn't even do anything. No, no, do it. Somebody crazy. Drop the bandana. Black lives matter. We do have an exclusive clip of the shooting. Blue lives matter. The media may say what they want. But be advised, this footage is quite graphic. Don't speak to nobody until you speak to your union rep. Hey, Reese, I did what I had to do, man. Lawyer up. I'm Officer Lincoln Hall. What you gonna do? Shoot me? Shoot me then! Damn now! Four, three. Stay outside and walk in. I'll, I'll bring you in. We're, we're live. <laughs> wow, Suzanne. Wow. What a gift. Right. You, this is a, these are friends of Suzanne, and uh, wow, what great friends you have. Absolutely, it's it's great to have them here. How I did, feel very blessed. How did you how did you find them initially? How did you become friends with them? Uh, well, I've known Larissa from mutual friends. We met up in Angeles Oaks, actually. That's where we our first we camping outside. Camping. <laughs> Camping. With a bunch of people with guitars and singing and playing flutes, and then you had um, her flute and she had her harmonium. Exactly. That was a harmonium, by the way, that yeah. instrument that she had. It's an air-driven. She has to sit there and <clears throat> pull the air through it as she plays the guitar. I mean, plays the piano. <laughs> At least an octave. What is it? Two octaves mm -hmm. on that harmonium? Yeah. Two. Wow. Awesome. Listen, that last trailer that you that you just saw uh, was developed by a great artist. His name's Rashawn E. Vaughn. Uh, an actor, filmmaker, spoken word master, uh, multi-talented individual, and he's always up and coming. And uh, I think it, he's working on a play right now. He's working on getting this short that you saw a trailer. Well, that was a trailer for a short film. And um, um, they've actually developed a feature. So they've written a feature a film based on the short film. And they're, you know, they're shopping that around and, and and, and getting the word out there. Um, these entertainers are here to, it, it, it's more the motivation through their art is how they provide their public service. Like this officer, Lincoln Holly, uh, uh, deals with some really heavy issues. And uh, Rashawn will be able to speak to those more directly than us. So let's uh, bring in. 
Rashawn Vaughn. Hey. Rashawn Vaughn. Oh, oh, what up? Rashawn Vaughn. Uh, we'll give you a few moments oh, to, a, like, you, gather that's yourself. That's <laughs> nice of you. You got that wine. Do I, how do I? <laughs> yeah, rotate sit. <laughs> okay. um, and I think the far mic w- might work best for far you. Far mic. Yeah, on, over your left shoulder. Uh, that right there. That yeah. guy? So, yeah. So flip it around? Yeah, just r- pull what? it towards you. Is that better? Yeah. Because <clears throat> that other keep, one's keep, a little far Keep out. it bringing. Keep coming. Keep, keep it, keep keep going. it coming. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. There you go. How was that? <laughs> there you go. How was that? There you drop go. Us a Is this beat. the approach? Can you drop us where a beat? we at? We at Joy Score. <laughs> we're at Joy Score, we're baby. We're at Joy Score. Yeah. You're brought. Uh, we brought to you by. You're brought by Joy Score. Uh, by Joy Score. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, this, this, thanks for being here, my brother. No, thank you for inviting me. And Susan, it's always a pleasure to see you. It's wonderful to see you. <laughs> I don't know you're here Listen, this was Sean. I asked him. I said, I said, dude, come in here with some spoken word. Whoa. Ready. So I want to get him like fired up and going as soon as he. What? He's got that mic. Do You'll that. do a spontaneous riff. You want me to do spoken word? That's, well, that's we'll you, see when that, it flows. That's what you do, man. Well, uh, I'm gonna share a poem that um, that made this guy, this guy, say, dude, you got something. Will you work with me? Mm. And that was some time ago. So I shared something with it. It was on a shoot. It was on a shoot, a film shoot in Ensenada, Mexico. Was it Ensenada? Oh, my goodness. You remember that? Yes. Yeah, you remember that. (laughs) Taking him back. Yeah, we went way back, way back. I didn't have rent. I said, no, but I'm going anyway. Right? So, um, the piece is called A Dedication to a Best Friend. It's probably somber. Should I do something more? No, dude, it's, be- it's beautiful. You can do more than that if you don't are satisfied, but we're ready. We're ready for you. We'll start I, there I, and I, then I, we'll I remember go that. So, <laughs> it's like, Susan, I had to awaken with this pain. A deep pain in my chest. Mm-hmm. I knew that there was something wrong with me because... All night long, you see, I had been tossing, turning. I got little or no rest. But this, I believe, is kind of unbelievable because I feel like (laughs) in my world, in my life where everything radiates, a hemisphere of light had just went dull. Hmm. Now, I, I couldn't pinpoint the epicenter of my ache, but I think it was about eight, yeah. It was eight in the morning. And for whatever strange reason it was, it felt like it was gonna be a day of mourning. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking of Most High God because this was definitely like some kind of prelude or some kind of warning to some emotions that would be less bearable. But I'm knowing that God, right? He wouldn't put me in a situation that I wasn't able. But when the telephone rang, and I answered it, I knew it had to be some kind of lie or fable. This could not be the truth. See, I believe that everything, everything, it happens for its purpose and its reason. But this is the end. My heart stopped beating. My chest stopped breathing and then my mind stopped thinking. And they notified me I had just lost my friend. My best friend. My best friend is dead. My best friend will never laugh again. Mm. Never smile again. I'm watching the puddles fill on the floor from the streams of my eyes. Heavenly Father, please. On both knees, I was crying. Heavenly Father, please. I feel like dying. Yeah, they tried to break it down to me softly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they tried to tell me my best friend was in some kind of better place, but man, this didn't mean a damn thing to me. All of their efforts were in waste. They tried to tell me my best friend would be missed. Loved, adored forevermore. But basically what the hell it is that they told me is that my best friend I will see nevermore. And I felt this piercing straight to my core. Because there was still so much more I had to say. Yeah. Listen, I would have told it yeah. to her then if I knew that would have been her last day. Mm-hmm. I want to 
held her tighter. You know, made her smile brighter. Let her know how strong she had made me. From just her voice and her words. Like, she had confidence in me. Mm. When I lost it, and she said, hey, pray and believe in it, right? But how can I believe in it? And she is no longer here. And forever, I shed tears because she's no longer near. Mm. But I remember, I remember taking this walk. Taking this walk and I laying my eyes on her magnificent beauty. I was looking up at the open blue cloud past skies, remembering some words of wisdom she spoke to me. She said, my son, you live to learn. My son, you learn to love. My son, learn to let go. My son, and this is when you learn to grow. And these words, they flow gently from her lips embracing my presence with her essence and assuring me that in these times of hardships, you just know that sound. persevering through it, it brings forth some confidence. So indeed, right? I know her spirit is free. Mm -hmm. She's in heaven, she's watching over me, she's guiding me and she is proud of what she has produced. I, her seed, will bring forth life and yield good fruit. So God bless, and may her soul forever rest. And I have now passed one of life's most heartbreaking tests. Mm. Yes, this is a dedication to a best friend. And I say it's a dedication to a best friend because, thank God my mom's still here, but this was a poet that I met, fresh from New York. She came in, her and her friend, and I just, you know, I picked up the phone to say, hey, how you doing? Oh, she's not around anymore. She flew back east because her mother passed. So when she, upon her arrival, mm. I had a poem for her, a dedication to a best friend. Mm. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. So yes. beautiful. Like Absolutely. I'm mm. just making sure that we got... I love actually, Rashawn, you I know, the, the, in, the poetry, Say how... Say something, the, Yes. The remorse of like I woulda, coulda, shoulda, right. that, those lost right. moments. So if you can share a little bit about those lost moments that sometimes we don't have presence to capture, like we're having a moment right now. Right. Uh, can you share a little bit more about that, how we can seize the day? I know you have a young son and a beautiful wife. Like how do you bring that presence back to there to capture those moments that you might miss? Um, well, yeah. moments that are missed are supposed to be missed <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm like i'm like you know we we're you know learning from this guy over here man <laughs> you know we the moment is here and it's up to us to be present in it mm. you know <laughs> i i'm nothing if i have to bring in some weight from yesterday or Mm -hmm. something into a creative space like this right. you know he, he teaches uh the art of bonnie approach this guy over here he teaches uh, now like, he's you know, plugging me he's plugging <laughs> so, so he teaches like you know even though we may be in a kind of funk we can still utilize that funk in our space when we're creating mm -hmm. so but if we're not it's here the juicy it's, it's the, the juice <laughs> As they would well, say, it's the well, listen, that, that, that's really, that's beautiful. So you're another artist who has found a way to elevate his spirits through his art. That spoken word was beautiful. It was, it was really, really, really wonderful. It, 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 it jumped just as, their, just as their instruments jumped, just as their voice jumped. So maybe you could uh, help define, like, you have this, you have a technique, you have a process. That brings you to a higher place, yeah? Do you do you use that thing in your day to day? I do. Uh, well, you know, I keep it simple, man. <laughs> hey, first seek ye kingdom, and all else will be given unto you. So, what is what is that thing? You know, it's it's prayer, meditation. I read the word, the Bible. It gives me my insight. It gives me that extra that I need. Because sometimes I just 
you know, as artists dealing in life and being a black man in America, don't let me start talking about that, <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot on our, on our plates and sometimes that serenity comes from soothing words and just knowing that it's going to be okay. So, you know, we, we, I start off my day with, with prayer and meditation. Do I do it all the time? No. Working on it. <laughs> Good Working job. Working on it. Good job. <laughs> yeah, but when you're doing your work, you're you're in your you're in your safe space to feel and express and to explore. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So it's got to carry. I mean, life is life is scary, like you said. Life life can be intimidating, but in the toughest moments, I guess when you go to do your work here, you know you're. Well, you're, I know what I'm here for. What's that? To touch. Hmm. To touch people. To heal them. Hmm bring them closer to that higher power that thing through my work through my gifts your gift as a filmmaker as well I mean it's not, we, we saw the officer Lincoln Holly uh, oh I hey cause I know she's probably watching hey baby hey baby <laughs> his wife, his I, I, I can't take live. oh yeah <laughs> and if, if if the other people are watching too I can't take credit for that I had an awesome brilliant filmmaking team uh, that stuck with me and stuck with Officer Lincoln Holly, the project. First of all, I, I, it's nothing without Haifa Simon, my wife, because mm. she is the writer. And she did that and she put her mm. her foot in it. So, so, so the two of you clearly were moved to put pen to paper to communicate some social justice issue to the community oh right? yeah exactly yeah well we just had a child too she got pregnant and it's like you know in four weeks within the first month of him being born there were four police killings four mm -hmm. unarmed so we're like um, well hey you know when it comes to you know work for for us it's like, hey, I can, I can dance. You want to, want to see a soft shoe? Remember that time? You want to <laughs> see a soft shoe, right? I can sing, I can sing, I can shuck and jive. That's from Short Eyes, the right? Band. So Miguel Pinero, yeah. I got to direct these guys. You know, I can, you know, I can do, I can do all that. But what does that really do for my people? So it is my duty as a filmmaker to make art that says something. That does something. I'm not. Hey, I, I could entertain you. Once again, I could dance. I could shuck and jive. I could. Well, I won't put on a dress. They might try <laughs> to make me later. But okay, we'll cross that road when it comes. Yeah. Choke. Right. But anyway. Can you share a little bit of uh, the power of art and activism coming together and what it opens up for well, you uh, guys, those who view it? Well, you guys remember, we are the world. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did it do something? Absolutely. Yes, it did. So what? Yes, it did. So th that's the whole idea be behind Officer Lincoln Holly. The feature is music, mm. is change. The whole concept. We have. We used to watch. We used to soundtracks. Yeah. We used to move movies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The music used to move people to go watch movies. Yeah, because you. That's all you had. Yeah. You couldn't watch it over and over again. So, <laughs> so, 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 so brief. Uh, so, Officer Lincoln Holly is is about an officer that is put in a situation and he pulls the trigger and he kills a son that looks like his fourteen year old son. Mm -hmm. Kills a fourteen year old. Yeah. And, but it's interesting though. It's a black officer. It's an African a Christian American. black officer that goes to church, prays. You know, does. So it's not. It's not. He didn't. They didn't pull out the. They didn't. They didn't uh, how did you come? It, it's a hard thing for me to talk about, but in terms of why, why did you, you know, race bait? You didn't pull out the race, race bait. They didn't, yeah. they didn't race bait. Race bait. We didn't say, hey, let's do the black and white thing. So that's the. I couldn't do it anyway. Well, that's the that's the beautiful that's yeah. the, that's the beautiful <laughs> aspect of this particular film. It makes it so unique. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, and 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 we don't we don't want to talk about you know it, dude. It's 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 beyond black and white or black versus blue it's not about that people in order for anything to, to really cause some effect it has to be policy change so the best way that we could and miss haifa really share that is through this type of narrative and and you know what's so awesome doing what we do we get to do whatever we want to do 
<laughs> it's that creative process. Right. But you're still serving the, your parameters, serving your audience something that they'll walk away from uh, thinking. Well, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Making us think, making us feel, making, making us feel. feel. Yeah, yeah. Man. yeah. But but you're but you see it's the impetus. So uh, eventually, Officer Lincoln Holly will get done. You'll develop something else. You involve yourself with something else. Something else will move you, and it's that moment of inspiration where you feel like you can do something. Correct. Right. Correct. That's where the joy for these artists, these filmmakers, these spoken word people, these actors come in. When they find something that they can really throw themselves into, you're going to get the best out of them. Pow, 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 pow. Right. And so, uh, so, what, so how's it? So how's it? So how's it going? And and in terms of what is the next step? Well, what do you, what do you got? I mean, how are you? Well, you know, I've been, you know, I've been thinking we definitely want Tom aboard. You and, know. Where, and where can we see it? Where can we see the short in its entirety? Like you have it in film festivals. It's, well, it's, it's currently touring. That tour might be about over. Film festival, <laughs> film festival route, yeah. How yeah, we did it. We did a little film festival tour. Um, we also have Danny Zacapa in that. Those Z and like, Alan Maldonado, yeah. and Alan all Maldonado. working actors. Yeah, so the film's jacked. It's got some guys well, you know, and since we're pitching, you know, it's like, hey, yeah, there's an awesome feature. There's an awesome feature, you know, and, you know, we have in our in our proposal, we have like the likes of a Josh Holloway in there or a Neil McDonough or uh, uh, even a Clayne Crawford, you know. We also have spots for like, who else am I thinking of? Those are all my clients, by the way. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Did he just do that? Yeah, guys, like, come on. So, Rashawn, share you know when you take a project as a filmmaker like this that has definitely social voice and then you do it you build it with your wife it takes a whole village to create it and now you have this other inspiration how does that feed your feed you you know and excite you and even though the 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 topic might is serious but how does it feed you and lift you up similar to your meditation and prayer well the uh, the job's never done mm -hmm. So right. uh, I don't have the luxury of like <laughs> stopping. Yeah. What did I say? Um, the key to success is never stopping, but running or walking <laughs> as the energy dictates, but never stopping. You yeah. have to continue <laughs> to go. Yeah. So, um, and where, know, do, where do you source that go from? Where do I source it from? The man above, baby. Uh, well, no, I don't, I don't. I can't even. I can't take responsibility for saying, "Hey, give me that," or "Can I have that, please?" <laughs> right? No, I can't take responsibility. Of that you know what he did? He said, "Here," long time ago. Before I even, before he was in your mama, and I said, "Here, here you go." So you got the energy. Use it. Do something with it. Mm. You got the talent. Do something with it. Mm. I gave this to you. Go touch my people. Yeah. Uh-huh. Go touch, do, do something. Yes, do something. Yes, to do, do something. To do nothing, to say nothing is wrong, especially when it comes to this, this thing called lethal force. We can't keep sitting down and watching it and just saying, yeah. oh. Yep. Right? And, so. And how does that bring you joy? How does it, how does it, how does that, see, see the thing, here's the, here's the, here's the connection. <clears throat> you have people watching. And they might be struggling with stuff. And I'm advocating the arts, and Suzanne is advocating the arts and activism in terms of elevating the artists that have the courage to get into it. But understanding that uh, the process itself uh, is enlightening uh, can be challenging, of course. Well, absolutely challenging. But once again, if it's not challenging, what are we working for? What are we working for? Right. Yeah, sure. If we, yeah, you know, if we had a, if we had a supply and didn't supply of finances where we did not have to worry about who's going to take pay for the cameras and all of this extra stuff, well, then maybe we were looking at things in it from a different perspective. <laughs> but until I think we reach that plateau where um, we have, we get to choose or we have to choose, or not even if we have to, we want to choose to make some a project that moves people, then that's a different story. Mm. Uh, a paycheck is a paycheck. I'm not talking about a paycheck. Once again, I can shuck and job for you. Yeah. <laughs> talking about passion. <laughs> passion. <laughs> We're talking about passion. Let's mm -hmm. once again we can all be entertained. We make entertaining projects. You make entertaining projects. Tom, come on, you're a consummate professional making entertaining projects. 
Well, listen, 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 go ahead. No, no. I mean, I just, I'm just, I, I want to hear some more spoken word. I want, I want, I want you to take that passion right into something else, mm -hmm. so we can experience. See, the cool thing is about an artist, we can talk about this, but in this format, we want to feel it. We want to experience it. We want to feel it in the poetry. What is it? Well, what, let what? me. Um, what is what? What is poetry? Making pastime present. Yeah. Making pastime present. Making something that you experienced present for the audience that gets to experience you performing it yeah poetry baby spoken word um <clears throat> Past time, uh, sure, birth. it's the lifestyle and the attitude mm. <laughs> fortune and glamour of broadway hollywood silver screens and skylight beams this is my destiny more than just a dream thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> did I forget it? I think I forgot it. I love it. The glory of his purpose stimulates while traveling through my respiratory. Manifested through its power, pull, and prestige promotes change politically in this perverse society. But that's another story. See, fame it generates. Never stopping, but running or walking as the energy dictates. See, fame, I'm speaking. I can't believe I used his name in one of my poems. I'm thinking. I'm speaking of large, being larger than Trump, <laughs> Ross, the Jacksons, the Cosbys, the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, Masons, and the Illuminati. Fame. I be the flame that sparked the revolution. I hear it echoed in history books. The fusion of a people righteously governing the good and the evil. Fame. <laughs> Here's the last verse. I skipped my whole verse. Um, okay, okay, okay. So on both knees in humility to end the day. With faith, he opens doors and shows me a way. So I pray, not for money, but for opportunity. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and guidance to control my inequity. See, fame is mine, and I got to have it. Fame, for my love of it, is likeness to a fiend with a crack habit. You see, I savor for the day to enjoy all fruits of my labor. I'm speaking of a status that demands favor, the transformation from a minor to a major, be it now or be it later. I'll take no rain mm. checks to my claim check to fame. Tamed by desire to acquire, if there be a blip with my name, pow, mm. then to my death I will aspire fame. It's the lifestyle and the attitude, the fortune and glamour of Broadway and Hollywood, silver screens and skylight beams. This is my destiny. It's more than just a dream. Mm. Fame. It's the Romeo Echo Victor, Rashawn Eugene Vaughn for 2018 and beyond. Where we at? Joy score, joy score, joy score. Come on, y'all, say it. <laughs> joy score, joy score, joy score. That's what we want, baby. Joy score. I love you. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So, yeah, we were... So, 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 so on that poetry, you're flying, man. You got wings when you do that. It's like you go to another space, another place. Just for Well, you know, taste. it's... it's, it's, it's I wrote it, so you know the memorization and knowing it, knowing the work, it, it comes easy. Um, why did Why did you invest all that time into putting that out there? What What, what allows you to invest a lifetime in, in sharing a piece like that? What drives you? Well, it was created, and it just never left. <laughs> it was created. Like I got stuff. Like, I'm pulling, like, like wait, whoa, where did that come from? <laughs> Okay. It's kind of how poetry happens. That's how poetry. <laughs> spoken well, well, listen, well, listen. I mean, you got an audience that might. And like, how do you get into spoken word? I mean, how do you, how do you begin to process and think like a spoken word artist? Like, how do, well, how do you? When so did it start? If you, if you were to give somebody, like, you know, insight into how to just begin to step in, what would you, what would you tell them? Tricky, right? Such a personal thing. Such a I'm personal. I'm like, uh... It was always a part of you, wasn't it? 
Well, you know, um, I went to the military and then I came back home and one of my buddies said, you used to write us letters to give the girls all the time. <laughs> I did? You were the muse. You were the muse. Okay, so, you know, I guess, you know, I don't, I, listen, if you're a writer, you're a writer. Spoken word is one thing. Spoken word says that you want to share it. Um, well, mm -hmm. look, if it's our talent. He gave us talents, right? He didn't give us talents for ourselves. Oh, let me write my poetry and read it to myself. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> let me share it. No, it's mine. <laughs> our talents aren't for us. Yeah. So you're serving. You're serving with with your, when I share with your it, gift. With my, when I when I drop one on you, mm -hmm. it was meant for you. Absolutely. That's why my poets. Wow. That's so I, remember, I used to I say before. I was like, because I didn't always share. Mm -hmm. I'm led to share. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so like how did that transform you? So, so there had to have been a moment where you get up on stage for the first time and you got this thing you were doing. Oh, you know thing. what it was? I and, saw. I and saw then a how movie. did it? But how did it? What movie did you see that? Inspired Love Jones. You? Love Jones. Mm -hmm. I said I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that. I could, I could do it better. And then you. And then you. Get, then but, I wrote one and did it. And then, and then, then I'm like, okay. So, but, but you did it. But uh, you know, I've always oh. Memories, I got it. Memories, infantile and age grew a passion for being on the stage. The featured attraction, the headliner, the cover story on front page. Exclusive interviews on the road, shopping binges for shoes, clothes, jewelries and diamonds and gold. Satisfying my hunger that is not all discreet. Say it with me, bone appetit. Dining at five star restaurants, sipping fine cappuccino, reading my billboards from the street. Fame, baby, fame. 15 plus minutes of fame being more than just the name. Fame, a powerful executive pulling strings internationally for gain. Fame. Wow. That mm. blew right through me, my brother. It's passionate. Blew right through me. Can you share with the listeners if, you know, I love writing poetry myself, but uh, I share it in 2D form more, more, most, more than not. Can you share with the listeners that there are a lot of closet poets out there, how they might jump into spoken word to express it? You must have gotten filled what is, up, though. What when, is it? When, you know you, what? when you express that, though, something must have clicked in you. Like, this is something I can, I, I want to feel this. And it's the experience, the exchange, the relationship with your audience and those that are listening that must have filled you up, must have filled your cup up, right? Isn't that the hook? When you realize that... Well, you, we, you, you realize that you wrote something and somebody understands it. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that, huh? Um, well, I, had a me I have a message. What am I here to do? I'm here to touch and heal. Mm -hmm. I never deny or forget that. Right. So, like, you cl closet poets, I'm like, okay. That's cool. It's, I'm <laughs> glad you're writing. Yeah. Sure. Not saving anybody, not touching anybody <laughs> by keeping it in the closet. Yeah. Sure. You know, and maybe it's not a thing of, you know, just, listen, I am a performance poet. Performance. Yeah. Right? I don't mind being on stage. I'm animated, naturally. That's my stick. But there's people that get up there and, and say, <laughs> <clears throat> I am no earthling. I drink moonshine on Mars and mistake meteorites for stars because I can't hold my liquor. But I can hold my breath and ascend like wind to the black hole and play galaxophones on the fire escapes of your souls. Uh, coming from you, it still worked. Sorry. <laughs> but that's, that's still, like, well, <laughs> why not start there? <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm that, that's Saul Williams. That is not mine. Yeah. That is Saul Williams. <laughs> Great poet. I had a, uh, had the opportunity to mm -hmm. interview. That, that's awesome. An actor, yeah. awesome actor, awesome artist, Saul Williams. So, so that's a good transition to your acting. As an actor, you're not always playing a uh, life affirming, lift lifting like an officer Lincoln Holly. You're not playing a guy that's on top of the game. You're playing a guy that's suffering. He's in the depths of his sorrow. He's drinking himself to death. Uh, in a in the film that you just did for us. Hey, can you run that? Can you run that bully to the brink trailer? <laughs> Bullies have been around for a long time. I mean, think about
about it. I mean, everyone is so PC. Kind of disappointed. I thought you had what it took. We're raising a bunch of snowflakes. You know, if someone messes with me, to bust them right in the throat. We'll regret this. We're back. <clears throat> we're back. So that scary guy in there, the we're guy. Back. We're back. <laughs> we're back. The guy that was a terrorist with a gun and all that stuff. Oh wow, I didn't how, see it. How did you prepare to play this horrible character? With your wife? His wife plays the other terrorist. <laughs> Basically what happens is in the film, uh, there's a there's a a waiter that's being just harassed all day long and then if that's not bad enough, there's a, a terrorist attack, there's an explosion, and the terrorists come into the restaurant where uh, the waiter happens to be. And uh, Rashawn is the driving force and the terrorist in this particular film. So, so you're- you, so want, you, want the, you want to know the character analysis and breakdown for all how, that? How did you, but how did you, you know- How, well, how did you jump into it? <laughs> come on now, come okay, on Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna bear all, all right? All right. Now here's the secret, guys, for you new actors, right? All right, so look. When taking on these types of roles, now you got to listen to me clearly. Terrorists, um, you know, uh, other type of aggravating or aggressive roles. Officer Lincoln Holly. Officer Lincoln Holly is uh, is different than yeah, completely yeah. different. So, so how I had to develop that character is I literally I watched Fox News for about three days straight. Um, I put in a couple rap videos um, and pretty much that was it. So I pulled from, follow me guys, I pulled from some of the energy that's already been projected about what these people are or how they behave. I think, what's that like, Meisner? Did I like was that Stanislavski? Which one? Which one was that, Tom? I, I'm not sure. Okay, <laughs> it might be a merge between them all. Yeah. No, I'm joking. No, it wasn't. There's come on. It was an angry black man. I I used dialect that was of Middle East, I guess. Allah Akbar. Yeah. But it was more caricature, in my opinion, than anything. It was that wasn't work for me. And it's crazy if. <laughs> so was it so if, hold on, hold on, hold on. But it's crazy if people look at it as work, and you don't see it as that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. it's pretty scary. So basically, your frustration, as you've stated very clearly, black man in America, and you hear you walk into a restaurant full of, uh, of well, light, light pigmented skinned people, and you're able to do a, have a little catharsis there, yeah. Yeah, well, Tom gave me some great character breakdowns, some moment befores before we ran into there. So, uh, my my co-actor, uh, Miss Simon, uh, we knew that what was going down and what what was supposed to be executed. So once you you, you engage, you just stay fully engaged. And uh, my voice was gone after that day. Yeah, you walked in with automatic weapons and nine millimeters. Right? Yeah, so we are there, obviously there was one objective. So I mean. And so, you but but I guess it's, it's a passion. What you're talking about, you're, not ta you're just talking about what I'm bringing into the room. What I'm bringing, the energy that I'm bringing to that space. But also, listen, there's a, see, you're an artist, though. There's, even though the energy and the frequency was so powerful and dark, you, in your zeal as an artist, fulfill yourself with that. And when you're... When the day is done and we yeah. get our day, yeah. you still feel good because I got my day. You put well, your, you put everything you had into it, yeah. You're it, still feeling good. It's not a hobby, Tom. Yeah. Right. No, no. What we do at this stage, 
I got a hat on because I'm getting gray hairs. At this stage, it's not a hobby. Mm. You do it and you enjoy it. Or don't do it. Wasn't it? It's not about pay. It's about, I'm an artist, I'm an actor, I have to perform. And if I don't, then there's a part of me that's missing. Mm. I'm unhappy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When we're not, when the true artist, I, I don't even want to say true artist or label the type of artist. I believe that if it's in you to do it, then you have to do it. And if you don't do it, you'll be miserable. And nobody wants to live in misery. So even if it's just, hey, you know, every two or three months you get a phone call, hey, can you just show up on set and, and do something? Oh, yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah. See, that, that bring, that's, that's the artist. I've heard the same analogies created by musicians. If they don't pick up their guitars, they're miserable. If they don't get out there and sing, they're miserable. They, there's some aspect of them that that fades away without their ability to communicate and to share within their given skill set. Mm. That, that's beautiful. Can we can we go to a Joy Score commercial? How can we find you? And let, let's not go to that right now. So you need you need money for this film, this feature film. Correct. Can, if somebody's out there that's watching that wants to get involved with this extraordinary artist and uh, help bring you, this you, wonderful short film, I'm sure they'll send you the short film. You oh, check absolutely. It out. And they're looking for financers and executive producers to further this feature film along. And this is a this is a hot topic. How can we find you? How can we? How can people help you? Absolutely. Well, where can they go? www. Spelled the way it sounds. <laughs> Officer Lincoln Holly. There's no e. Officer Holly. Lincoln Holly. Dot com. com. That is correct. And then what? What do they do once they go there? So it's info. My email is info at Officer Lincoln Holly. If you like to screen the film, you can, you can send me an email, and I'll send you the short film. See that you can screen the film. And then you can decide whether you want to get involved in this awesome project. I have t-shirts. He has t-shirts. You have one on. I have one on. Hashtag, hashtag in, 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 in Lethal Force. Mm. That's the campaign. Yeah. Hashtag End Lethal oh, Force. So it's um, officerlincolnholly.com. Info at Officer Lincoln Holly to request a screener of the film. And mm -hmm. I'll get that to you ASAP. All I ask in return is that you give me the kind of feed any kind of feedback I all. need feedback yeah I can't can't screen it without feedback how about so I'll make a deal what? with you how about as an actor weren't you gonna put up a, a play oh yeah how about we find you as an actor oh my goodness how about we want to cast this guy yeah so like yeah I'm in a play <laughs> <laughs> in a play called Peel Hill Mm -hmm. All right. Shout out to Coleman and Smith Artistic Company. Lamont, Lamont, Lamont Coleman, Coleman. Miss Marie. Yeah, Rose Ms. Marie Coleman. Love okay, you. so Love what you. what's going on? Famous play, famous play. Peel Hill, famous playwright. Sam Kelly, time period piece. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's it's six friends in 70s Chicago. Cool. That work at a steel mill that's about to close. Mm -hmm. So imagine that all of us worked it together and the job is about to close. So who actually changes their life and prepares for it? So it's a coming of age story about these, these groups of these men who mm. see, see life coming at them dead ahead and how they maneuver through it. Mm. Some people don't make it all the way through. Mm. So that will be at the West Angeles Performing Arts Center, I believe that is 
3020 Crenshaw Boulevard, right? That will be running on the weekends throughout the month of October. Wonderful. So, so Tickets can be bought at Coleman and Smith Artists, Colsack, Biblical Films, biblicalfilms.org. So when you get that information, you're going to send it again, and then, we're going and then we'll, put, we'll add it. We'll, yes. We'll add, it, add it to our Absolutely. ads and remind people to go oh, check it out. Absolutely. Rashawn, I love you, my brother. You know he's the best man at my wedding. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. So great to see you, A little bit of Rashawn. nepotism here. <laughs> a, lot, no, a lot of it. Hey, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, it was a really pleasure having you, and... Suzanne, would you have any questions for this guy before we send them out in a few seconds? Well, I'd be curious what has been your feedback, what conversations has started from yes. your film, yes. like so far that people have viewed it, what conversations has it speared, and what solutions? <clears throat> well, um, we dig into solutions in the feature film. Okay. So the solutions actually are, I'll share one. Okay. So Madam... <laughs> Damn, what? I have to share two now. Wife, please forgive me. So, Madam President mm. comes out and says the shootings have to stop now, mm. right? And the, one of the first things that's implemented is no one's going to get a gun without a four-year degree. Mm. You have to have, you have to know how to deal with humans, mm. and you can't be fresh from high school. Mm giving a gun and be expected to know how to use it properly or to have life experience to deal with people. Mm. All types of people. People with disabilities that you don't even know. Yeah. Compassion, empathy. Mental illness. Mental right. illness, yeah. 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 Well, that, so, so, so there, there you go. There, there, there you have that's it. a little that's a little Beautiful. So I'm going to be that's casting for you, teaser. Madam President. I know, I know who you are. <laughs> Come on, Octavia. Come on. Well, Octavia, you want some big names? Yeah. Right? Gonna need some well, big well names. once again, here's a beautiful, beautiful thing about my project. It's a project for activists. And those people that I've selected or we've, we've chosen or we're mm. thinking about going after, they're activists. Mm. So it should move their hearts. Absolutely. And if I call you and I reach out to you, hey, you know, it is what it is. What is an activist? An actor in life, yeah. yeah. An actor in life. Somebody transforming. Well, once again, water, water, I can shuck and jive all day. Yeah. Doesn't make me an activist. Gotcha. Hmm. Gotta get out there and do it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rashawn, for being here. Thank you for we having me. We appreciate you. I love your spoken word. Oh, thank I'm you. I'm going to go write a poem and speak it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so come to me, Juan. Listen, it's been a, a another wonderful experience here at Joy Score, and uh, Suzanne, awesome, mm -hmm. the lovely Suzanne, Suzanne Toro. <laughs> thank you for thank you for supporting this whole thing Joy and and, and, Joy and bring a lot of heart and soul to it. Mm -hmm. What do we have next week? We have a we have a wonderful show. Well, next week. we have, we have a, a yogi couple. from India. He, he, this will be his first but he's time. Like, he's like, like a millennial. He's like he, a, he is a millennial, and it's will be his first time in America. He just went to Poland for the first time, and now he will be in America on Joy Score Live. He'll share his practices um, more from a traditional sense and um, living in living in joy for certain as a yogi. We're probably going to have some more music. And then we have another uh, artist with us. With the saxo is Matt going to show up, the saxophonist? Uh, potentially, yeah. Yeah, we have some, we have some wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. musicians coming in, and we have uh, possibly another surprise actor or two. So thank you so much for tuning in. This is Thomas Artivani with Joy Score and Suzanne Toro. Thanks for joining us. Have a lovely evening, and uh, much love to you all. <laughs>